الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكر ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى we glorify him and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and his forgiveness. We beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection and his acceptance. And we beg our loving of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his guidance. And we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are in difficulties to grant them ease. Those who are sick to grant them shifa and to purify them. And those who have returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially our loved ones, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them, forgive them and grant them Jannatul Firdaus. My dear gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in Al Quran about a very dangerous and destructive disease. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also informed us about people before us who were afflicted with this sickness and what happened to them. A disease that breaks our immune system and causes other disease to penetrate. A sickness that breaks the human being and allow other evils to penetrate our hearts. And if we think that swine flu or HIV or COVID is bad, this is worse. If we think today that 80 million people worldwide is affected by COVID. The amount of people affected by this, this disease is much more than that. In fact, most of mankind are. And that is called ghafla. Throughout the Quran, we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about ghafla, about the ghafilin. People who are afflicted with this, they cannot go forward. It prevents them to, from getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it leads them to Jahannam. And ghafla is translated as negligence, heedlessness, dropping your guard, not paying attention. But it is much more than that. It, ghafla or this sickness is an attitude. An attitude of not focusing, not paying attention. Not thinking about the consequence of your action. It's doing and saying things without caring of the impact it will have. Without caring of the effect it will have, have on yourself and others. It's the attitude of being selfish and thinking about me, me, me all the time. This is the sickness that is preventing us 
from fulfilling our obligations to our fellow human beings and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the cause of many broken homes today. And those who are afflicted with this disease, what it is, their hearts become blind. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعَمَلْ أَبْصَارْ وَلَكِنْ تَعَمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي السُّدُورِ It is not the eye. Someone who cannot, doesn't have his eyesight, he is not considered blind. Not because you cannot see me, you are blind. But it is the heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that becomes blind. And those people, there is a veil on their eyes. And there is a plug in their ears. They cannot hear good things. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَلَقَدْ ذَرَأْنَا لِجَهَنَّمَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ Allah says, He has prepared Jahannam for multitude of men and jinn. Why? Because Allah says, they are afflicted with this sickness. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا They have hearts and they don't understand anything. They can't comprehend reality. Take an example. You have many intelligent people today. They're very intelligent and smart. But you see them committing foolish acts. For example, on the cigarette box, it says what? The Surgeon General says this caused cancer. But doctors and intelligent people, they smoke. Intelligent people, scientists, they worship a rock or an animal. They're intelligent. But that's not the problem. The problem is, it's the heart that has this ghilaf that's covering. They cannot comprehend reality. So the heart is blind. And all they think about is that instant gratification. Want to be like others, want to fit in in society, want to be cool. So the heart is blind. And they have eyes, but they can't see reality. They cannot see what is happening around them. They, don't, they cannot look at themselves and look at what Allah has created and say, this is the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to make dua. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa zukna attiba'a wa arina al-batila batila wa zukna jtinaba. Oh Allah, show us truth as truth. Help us to see truth. Make it clear to us. And show us falsehood as falsehood. And help us to stay away from what is false. So people who are sick with this ghafla, they cannot see truth. They cannot differentiate between truth and falsehood. And they use their eyes to look at pornography and to look at haram instead of crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا And they have ears. But those ears cannot tolerate goodness. Quran, good advice, is boring to them. But the ears are plugged with filth and with garbage. Because the ears and the eyes is what feeds the heart. So they cannot listen to good things. Allah says, these people, they are like domesticated animals, dumb beasts. They are not like animals. Because animals, wild animals, they are smart. Even the roach, if you happen to have roach in your home, they are smart. While you are there, they disappear. And in the night, when it's quiet, they come back. Or the rat, while you are there, they disappear. They are very smart. They are aware of danger. Or the lizard, or most animals. But the dumb bees, they require 
someone to guide them. They require a fence. And Allah says, People who are sick, they are not aware of danger, just like the an'am. But they are worse than that. These are the people who are sick with ghafla. These are the people who cannot understand. They don't recognize the danger out there. They don't recognize the temptations of shaitan. They don't recognize the tricks of shaitan. My dear brothers and sisters, and when people are afflicted with this ghafla, what happens to them? They are always, and they will be, in a state of regret. Because throughout Quran, wherever this word, ghafla, this sickness is mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it with regret. وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَصْرَ إِذْ قُدِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ the day of regret, of despair. People who are sick with ghafla, they lose Allah as their wali because Allah Allah is the wali of those who pay attention, those who remember him. But those who are in ghafla, they lose Allah as their wali and they are in the clutches of shaitan. People who are afflicted with ghafla, they follow their desire and they become slave to the dunya and they cannot understand that there is something beyond that there is accountability they don't pay attention last week someone called me and I just shared this and he says I'm sick I will go to, I'm about to go through an operation come and meet me and here are my bank cards I have a bank account in this bank and that bank and that bank and here is the pin. Hold on to him because if anything happens to me, you'll know what to do. When you think about it, you know, this is a person, may Allah guide him and guide all of us, that we are thinking only about the dunya, become a slave of the dunya, only thinking about that bank account and not realizing this is the moment I need to turn to Allah and ask for forgiveness. This is the moment I need to start to make dua. This is the moment I need to start pray and get my sins wiped out. But because of that veil, that heart is sealed, only thing people can think about that are afflicted with this is the dunya, is about himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that people who are afflicted with this ghafla, they know the affairs of the dunya well. They are expert in the affairs of the dunya. يَعَلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ The affairs of the dunya they know well, they are experts. But the affairs of the akhirah, they are غَافِلُونَ They are heedless. They don't pay attention to it. So my dear brothers and sisters, what I really want to remind myself of you of today, how do we make sure that we are not in that state? And this sickness, it's a sickness that you can snap in. You can become sick and you can snap out as well. You know, you go and you listen to a khutbah and you're at a high and you start to pray for a day or two or a week and then you go back into ghafla. Someone close to you pass away and you start to make dua and you start to read Quran and you start to pray. And after a few days, ghafla comes back. Or you listen to the news and you see 3,000 people are dying every day. And you become scared and you start to make dua. But after a few days, you're seeing 3,000 every day, every day, every day. It's not happened to, to me. So ghafla comes in again. And you stop paying attention and doing what you need to do. So how do we make sure that we snap out of that ghafla and we all stay in that state of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first and foremost thing that should be our daily dose. You know, all of us are thinking about the vaccine. 
that will protect us. But what will really protect us is our daily dose of Al-Qur'an. Because Allah says, Inna hadha Al-Qur'an yahdi lillatihi aqwam. The Qur'an guides to that which is most upright. Yukhrijuhu min al-dhulumati ila nur Take us out of ghafla, out of that darkness, into light. Fihi shifa'un las, and it is a cure. So we need to make sure every single one of us have our daily dose of Al-Qur'an. Surah Kah, that we are supposed to recite and study every week, every Friday, tells us, and that's why we recite Surah Kah every week, because it takes us that ghafla away from us, it reminds us of who is in charge, Allah is in charge, no matter what we possess in this world. It teaches us about being in good company, teaches us about seeking knowledge, teaches us about putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why every week we go to it to cure ourselves. But we need to make sure that is part of our routine, that every single day we are going to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for cure, for guidance, for solution, for answers. Without that, my brothers and sisters, no amount of vaccine, no amount of money will save us. We need to turn to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, we need to remind ourselves constantly as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was asked, what cleansed the heart? The heart that becomes blind, that becomes rusted, that has a veil on it, that is asleep, that is dead. What gives life to that heart? Qira'atul Qur'an wa kathratul zikr al Remember, death. How often we, pa we pass by the cemetery? Ask yourself, whenever you pass by the cemetery, does it ring a bell to you? Or we just see stones and, and oh, it's a cemetery. But does it ring a bell that I might be there tomorrow? That should remind us, my brothers and sisters, that we are returning to Allah, so it should remove that veil from our hearts. Because what ghafla does, what this sickness does, it tells you that you have time. Even though 3,000 people in this country are dying every day, ghafla tells you, it's not my turn yet, it's the other person. That is what ghafla does to us that we have time and somebody else will go for us. Even if you are sick, even if you have cancer, you still tell yourself, it's not me. That is what ghafla does to us. But if we remove that ghafla and tell ourselves, I might be next, then you will turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, my brothers and sisters, is good company. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if you want to get closer to Allah, if you want to get out of ghafla, you want to get out of a bad situation, change your environment. A man is on the religion of his friends and his company. So if you have bad company, company who are encouraging you, or you might say, they're not encouraging me, I'm just friends with them. I just go there. But if it's in the wrong environment, then you are part of them. Because our scholars told us, if someone fell into a gutter, you can take all the amount of water to wash that person. You can take the hose and wash that person down. He will never be cleansed. Because why? He's still in the gutter. But take that person out of the gutter and a glass of water can cleanse that person. So if you are in the wrong environment, if you find you're being stifled, that my friends, the environment, the people I'm mixing with is not helping me to come closer to Allah, then change that environment. And sometimes it, has, it will be a hard decision. People who you love, in order to cure yourself of this ghafla and to help them as well, you need to change your environment and take a stand. 
Number four is to constantly make dua to Allah. Because whenever you make dua, you are reminding yourself that I am a slave. I am a nobody. I am in need. Even though you think that you have everything in this world, but when you make dua, you are humbling yourself and say, Oh Allah, I am your slave. You are independent. I am dependent on you. And the more you make dua, the closer you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what helps to cure you from that ghafla. Because why? You are a slave of Allah and you are reminding yourself of your rightful position. Number five is to always remind yourselves that I depend on Allah and I put my trust in Allah. I will take all precaution. But if Allah does not will for something to happen to me, it will never. And the whole world can come together to harm me. But if Allah does not allow them, they cannot. That is the type of trust we put in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does that mean we do not take precaution? We take all precaution. But our ultimate trust is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like taking our daily, daily dose, we need to make sure we have daily checkups as well. You know, most of us go for a yearly checkup to our doctor. And if you are sick, you go more regularly. Every one of us, no matter how healthy you think you are, we need to have a daily checkup. Just like we have our daily dose of Quran, we have our daily checkup of Hasibu and Fusakum. We hold ourselves accountable. We check ourselves. What did I do today? Did Shaitan, the thoughts of, did he tempt me with anything? Did I deviate from the path of Allah? If you do a daily check of yourself, then you will constantly remind yourself and tell yourself, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do tomorrow to make sure when I do my daily checkup tomorrow, I have improved, I am better. And this is the only way, my brothers and sisters, that we will be able to cure ourselves from this ghafla. أَقُولُ كَوْلِي هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ لَا لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم صل وسلم بارك على رسول الله وعلى آله my dear gathering, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in Al-Quran that a person who remembers Allah and one who does not remember Allah is like the dead and the living. If you do not remember Allah, it means you are dead. It means your heart is dead. It is sick. We need, in order to stay alive, to make sure our hearts are healthy, free from ghafla, we need to constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only with our tongues, but with our eyes, our ears, our limbs. By making sure we are always looking at what is useful and good or listening to what is useful and good to us. Because one day, these body parts, our eyes, our ears, our limbs, hands and feet, will turn against us. And our feet will say to Allah, I did not want to go there, but He took me there. And our hands will say, oh Allah, I did not want to commit that, but He made me do that, or she made me do that. And just like how you force your eyes to look at haram, your eyes will say, oh Allah, that person forced me to look at haram and eat haram or say haram. So let us make sure that the limbs of our body are remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they will not turn against us. 
my dear brothers and sisters, our etiquettes in Islam, our daily adhkar, you know, the things we say before we even go to the bathroom, before we eat, bismillah, before we even drive our car, before we put on our clothes and our shoes, everything we do, we have an opportunity to remember Allah. And if we inculcate all of these in our daily life, then we will always be in that state of remembering all. We will always be alive. Our hearts will always be alive and kicking. But if we don't do these things, then there is a chance that ghafla will seep in. And we need to make sure, my brothers and sisters, as the Prophet ﷺ told us, use your spare time well, especially in this day and age, especially in COVID times, the time we are living in, where most people have a lot of spare time. Use it well. Otherwise, it will work against you because spare time and plus internet plus TV is disaster. Spare time and money is debt. So use your spare time well because you can easily be carried away if you are not focused. Take an example, almost everyone have a smartphone. How many times you have gone to your phone to call someone but you end up five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour doing something else being carried away somewhere forgetting that I was supposed to call someone or you go to your phone looking for something but you end up somewhere else never finding what you intended to don't only blame yes the social media is there and it has target and it keep bombarding us with things to destroy us we need to be focused and go if we are going for something focus because ghafla is what takes us away to this world and it is not easy and as muslims we need to have that courage and be smart and the only thing that will save us from being carried away in this fast moving society with all the things that is bombarding us is to make sure that your heart is never asleep it is not covered. As long as your heart is awake, then you have a chance of surviving. Knowing with all the social media and everything around you that you can focus and you can protect yourself. And my dear brothers and sisters, especially our young brothers and sisters, please wake up and stay awake. Don't wait until Malakul Maud come. And says to us, Lakot kunta fi ghaflatin min haza. When the angel of death will come to us and says, You are in ghafla. You are in ghafla. Lakot kunta fi ghaflatin min haza. Fakashafna anka khita'ak al yawm. Today we will remove that veil, that seal from your heart, because you are the one who sealed it. You are in ghafla. And you did not do anything to cure yourself. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us all to come out of ghafla and to always be in a state of dhikrullah, of always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from all sickness, from physical sickness, from spiritual sickness, and from all the sickness and evil that exists in our society. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our families. And I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with the good of the dunya and prepare the best for us in the akhirah and save us all from the torment of the hellfire. Ibadallah, ittaqullah, inna Allah ya'maru bil'adq wal-ihsan wa ita'i dhil-qurba wa yanha'ni al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-baghd ya'idukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Aqimu s-salam.